This simple wooden box has been the solution to my verse memorization problems, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Let's begin. November 16th, 2009, I'm on the school bus with my best friend next to me. And my friend says to me, but I thought your life was perfect. You see, I had just told her all about my sister completely rebelling. She had been this perfect Christian girl starting a Bible study in her public school and getting awards like highest GPA or most beautiful. And then all of a sudden she decided that kind of life wasn't good enough for her. And she wanted real life. And so she started rebelling. And my parents spent their 401k sending her off to boarding school only to realize when she was sent off that they have no semblance of a marriage left over. They had spent all of their money, all of their energy worrying about her and they had nothing left for themselves or their marriage. And so there I was on the school bus explaining to my best friend how in a matter of months, my entire life had fallen apart. And there she was looking at me from the outside going, I thought you had it all figured out. And if I'm to be honest with you, I felt the same way too. I thought I had all the answers. I was a good Christian girl to a Christian family. We lived there in North Texas with our family and our church. We had it all figured out. We had all the answers until we did it. And I felt so incredibly lonely with my newly divorced parents. Jesus hadn't been enough for my older sister. And then his kind of marriage hadn't been enough for my parents. So what is this Christianity thing then? Like I, I, like I thought we were Christians, like why are we having these problems? And so by the time I hit that 18 year old mark, I did what any 18 year old wants to do that wants to know more about something. I decided to take out a large loan and study it for my college degree. <laughs> so I went off to school and I was like, okay, let me study. God, because clearly we didn't have it figured out. Clearly my parents didn't have it figured out. Clearly my sister didn't have him figured out. What is going on here with faith if people can claim to be Christians and yet somehow it's not enough for them. And I went to Bible school on top of a mountain in Lookout Mountain, Georgia. I learned things like common grace and hermeneutics and things that blew my mind about the Bible. I remember walking out of class one day with my arm full of notebooks filled with notes and my mind having just been blown by a dorky professor with elbow pads on his jacket and telling Telling my friends around me and my now husband standing next to me, everybody needs to know this. Like all oh, Christians should know this stuff. This is incredible. And them all giving me blank stares. Like, okay, Faith, you're crazy. But I came to realize there in college, though I knew him and was studying him academically and a lot of my questions about how to read the Bible were being answered, that still didn't mean my life was gonna be perfect. And I found this out through struggling with overexercise and under eating. I realized that though I may know something, Knowing something is very different. And knowing something should impact what I eat or don't eat. When to say stop on the treadmill. So there I was at Bible school, learning all of these big lessons about faith and academically knowing God and then knowing him with my life, but also seeing this dissonance of still being a broken sinner. So then needing to go back and make sure I know him with my faith. And all of a sudden, before I know it, I'm standing in line with a cap and gown, ready to cross a stage and receive my diploma. My husband is standing behind me and we're about to be rewarded for one of the greatest achievements that we had achieved at that point in our life. To receive a degree in studying the Bible and I realized in that very moment, one of the most scary things I've ever realized. I realized, man, I, I took out loans. I, I just spent four years studying this thing. And all I learned was just how little I know. And there, my 2009 self felt the exact same way. What is this Christianity thing? I've now studied him. I, I thought I knew what it didn't look like by looking at my family and the way that it fell apart. I thought I knew what it did look like by looking at the Bible, but then it wasn't enough for my own life. Like, what does this look like? And so my husband and I graduate college and then my husband gets a job working as a youth pastor at a small rural church. And I expect that to be the perfect balance between faith and faith and faith in life. But I remember standing there outside of the church one Sunday morning as I'm about to walk into the sanctuary and feeling more lonely than my 2009 self on that school bus did. Because even though I knew him academically, even though I knew him with my husband in vocational ministry, even though I knew him with all these wrestlings and, and healing with overexercise and under eating and all of these the ways that I had known God and was knowing God, I felt more lonely than ever because who really wants to be friends with a pastor's wife anyway? After church that Sunday, I went home and I talked to Joseph about it. And I told him about my loneliness. And I told him about the parallels to how it felt with being alone in my faith back in high school. The not understanding why it wasn't enough for my sister or my parents. Why, why we still have problems like this, like this loneliness. And I sat there on the bed, crying my church makeup off, frustrated and kicking my legs so hard that my high heels flew off and hit the wall. And he said, Faith, this conversation isn't for me. This is a conversation to have with God. 
So I walked to the next door bedroom and there I have this cheap broken computer and I turned on the webcam and I talked to God. I talked to him like he was right there in the room. And I told him all about my wrestlings with academics, with knowing God versus knowing God. I talked to him about the questions of why we still struggle, even though we know him, but we're still fallen and sinful. And, and the questions about loneliness in the faith. If, if there are other believers, we should all be united. And, and, and frustration that it wasn't solving all of my problems, this faith. That video never saw the light of day because I never hit record. So in my second attempt to record this video diary to the Lord talking to him, something in my gut told me, talk like you would to a friend. So instead, I talked like I would to a friend. And I posted that video here on YouTube. And now years later, this has become a community of Bible nerds. And that lonely faith from 2009 is no longer lonely. Am I very crying out to the Lord? He provided a way for me to reach that family of believers who say, this is more than enough for me. And they wanna be Bible nerds with me <laughs> and talk about God's word and wrestle with the faith, meeting the faith and in our faith working out in our life and who are also maybe possibly lonely in their faith walk. And I tell you this story because though my family fell apart, Back in 2009, God gave me a real and true family. One that won't ever be broken apart by rebellion or divorce or anything like that, but one that's bonded by the Holy Spirit himself. And that is what the Christian life is about. It's not about figuring him all out here or only knowing him here or only knowing him in the way that you live, but it's the balance and the tension between all three. And it's the icing on the cake that we get to do this together. And so I tell you all of this because though I'm about to share with you how I memorize scripture, this isn't going to be a solution to all of your spiritual problems. Memorizing scripture is an act that puts scripture here, right? It's a very academic feeling practice. I'm wearing my, <laughs> y'all know I love my dorky earrings. I'm wearing my back to school Apple earrings because we're in that season right now where everyone's excited buying school supplies and everybody's going after school and it's fun to nerd out and to feel excited to learn, right? Like you're watching this video because you want to learn scripture and I'm going to show you how I do that, but it's just a this exercise. God makes it a this exercise. And then we together bringing scripture to mind and holding each other accountable to living out scripture is how we make it a this kind of exercise. The Lord tells us to write scripture upon our heart in Deuteronomy 11, to set it as like a frontlet between our eyes, to, to have it in the very thread of our being. And where that starts is here, but then it needs to move down to here and work itself out in here. So this, so this video doesn't end with just memorizing scripture. And the ultimate aim isn't just to be academic, like me going to Bible school. That's only half or a quarter of the Christian walk when it comes to verse memorization. But let's talk practically about my system. So the box here is a wooden box that I just got off of Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. Below. I wanted to specifically choose a pretty box because I could leave it anywhere. Like I could leave it on my countertops in my kitchen or, you know, out here in my studio where strangers are constantly walking by and looking in. Like it's pretty enough where you can leave it out and remind yourself to open it up and to practice your verses. Now inside, you will see this box has four different sections. So I organize the verses by what I wanna study on the daily. And then depending on the day, like the date of the month, I will study odd or even verses. There's different verses on that. And then I also have my monthly verse. And if you're part of Patreon, we have a monthly Bible study. By the way, you should totally join because Patreon is blowing up right now. We are on an app where we have access to each other around the clock. You guys can message me and things like that. And it's video messages back and forth. And it's so fun. It's really cool how they have it set up. And so my monthly verse is actually the verse that we're studying for my Patreon, like monthly Bible study. We unpack it and we verse map it all together, like live in a Zoom call. It's really cool. So like, if you want to memorize like my monthly verses with me, you could join me that way with with Patreon and it, it just takes it so much deeper to not only study it myself, but to study it with other believers that are also unpacking the verse as a whole and the topic as a whole. So that is my shameless plug. I will see you guys in Patreon. All of it is linked down below in my description box, but that is my monthly verse is I'm kind of studying it all month long for our monthly Patreon Bible study. And then as you guys can see, the second section here in my verse memorization box is each day of the week. So let's say it's Monday, the 2nd of September. So on Monday, the 2nd of September, I would pick my daily verse out and I would work on it and make sure I'm practicing the memorization. And then it's the second, so I would pick the even 
one. I would also pick up this month's verse and then I would pick up the Monday verse wherever it is, Monday. And so by doing that, I'm not only working on memorizing new verses, but I'm also maintaining my memorization of previous verses that I've memorized. So when I find a new verse, I'm like, ooh, I need to memorize this, write this on my heart. I put it behind my daily tab. Right now, I think I have like three different verses there. Oh no, I switched them. I only have one right now and it's Psalm 32 verses one and five. I think it was yesterday that I added this to my verse memorization box. And so since I added this yesterday, that meant I moved the ones that were behind the daily. I'd already memorized them. I moved them back to like different days of the week or different months or whatever. But what this does is it keeps you cycling through verses. So you're constantly learning a new verse on the daily. And then also you're testing yourself if you can keep on remembering previous verses. So if you wanna start a box like this, it comes with the little tabby organizer cards, these little white tabby ones. But then also, um, it, I think it came with the, the colorful ones maybe? I don't know, I can't remember. I would encourage you though to grab seven verses that you've already kind of memorized and mostly remember and put those behind the days of the week tabs. Then if you're working on a particular topic or book or verse study that you kind of wanna shape your month after, I would put that as your verse of the month. And then verses you only kind of know, I would put between the odd and the even so that your daily verse can be something that like is completely new that you're totally starting from scratch trying to memorize. And the best part of this system is it's a visual box out there in the open that I see at the end of my Bible study. So typically where I put my Bible, where I store it, I store it right next to this box. So when I finish my Bible study, it's a reminder. Oh yeah, I need to go through my box for the day. And if I'm really struggling with a verse in particular, I won't just go through my box once. I'll actually take my daily verse card out and I'll take it with me throughout the day. Here's one. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is Psalm 43, five, and it's like bent for me carrying it around. I'll like place it by the sink for the evening while I'm doing the dishes, or I'll tape it on the mirror and then bring it back to my studio here where I keep my box. So you can shape this around your daily routine. If it's your daily verse that you're really struggling with and you wanna have it in multiple places throughout your house and your office or whatever, you can write it down on multiple different cards, have it at your computer, have it at your sink when you're doing the dishes, have it at um, wherever you fold laundry, whatever, and then you still visit your box once a day. You know, there's a lot of different options to shape around your lifestyle, but because I spend my quiet time here at my studio, I keep my box here. The key to this video is not that you have to do it exactly like me, but to be inspired on some kind of system to keep you memorizing and staying fresh on your verses. This isn't all academic, but rather for them to infiltrate our heart. Because we believe the Bible's true, we want to be faithful to God's word and watch as it changes us. The one catch here though is not taking scriptures out of context. And I talk all about that here in this video. So if you haven't seen this video before, you definitely want to watch that to make sure you're not taking these verses out of context. And I will see you guys in this video. Oh, and click here if you want to join Patreon. Bye guys.